So the, we talked about the assumptions related to the CAPM and how unrealistic they are. Probably one of the most is that the market portfolio um, contains every available security, um, which we know that's not the case because there are many, many securities that are not accessible to the public. So what we do is we introduce what we call an index model. Um, for the vast majority of these models, we use the uh, S&P 500 for, as the market proxy. So uh, the uh, index model is simply the uh, the excess return for any security. So the return on that security in period T minus the risk-free rate in period T is um, equal to the alpha for that security plus the beta for that security minus the excess return on the market during that period minus the risk-free rate uh, plus the uh, residual or, or firm specific effects in that period. So again, RIT is the holding period return uh, for uh, I refers to the asset, T refers to the time period, uh, alpha I, the intercept of the security characteristic line for that security. Uh, <coughs> Beta I, the slope of the security characteristic line. RM, the market index return, as we mentioned, for the most part, that would be the S&P 500. Uh, others are used as well. Um, uh, again, uh, EIT or is, is for firm, firm specific effects. So we uh, rewrite the equation, the expected return for um, security I and period T minus the risk free rate or the risk premium for that uh, security is equal to the alpha for that security multiplied by the beta for that security uh, multiplied by the excess return on the market. So estimate the model. So that our, our uh, here we're going to talk about Google. Um, R sub GT stand, stands for the excess return for Google during period T is equal to the alpha for Google plus the beta for Google multiplied by the uh, uh, excess return on the market plus those firm specific effects for specifically for Google. So, as I mentioned, uh, R sub G is just the excess return for Google. So the residual is the uh, actual return minus the predicted return during a given period. So security characteristic line, the plot of the security's expected excess return over the risk-free rate as a function of excess return on the market. So the required rate um, simply the risk-free rate plus beta times the uh, expected excess return on the index. So this gives us the, the required rate of return for a given security. If the return is, uh, is less than that required re re return, we would not want to purchase that security. If it is greater than, we would because it would generate positive alpha. Uh, beta prediction. Uh, betas are subject to mean reversion, uh, meaning that betas move towards a mean over time. Well, the mean beta is the market beta of one. So, so when we're running regressions, which we're not going to in this class, but uh, predict future betas, you have to adjust them estimates from historical data to uh, um, account for regressions towards one. So, um, so the uh, CAPM is false based on the validity of its assumptions. However, it's a useful predictor of expected returns. It is, however, an untestable theory um, because, because that true market portfolio does not really exist. However, we can come up with some pretty accurate analysis when we use an index portfolio. So we, we can accomplish a lot of what, what the model is, uh, is attempting to do by 
by creating a market or using a market index or creating a market portfolio. So, uh, principles are still valid. Uh, investors should diversify. Systematic risk is the risk that matters because we can eliminate much of the firm's specific risk through diversification. Um, well diversified risky portfolio can be suitable for a wide range of investors. So we see that um, uh, in our um, 401ks, um, for the um, vast majority of investors um, and, and portfolios, uh, um, investment managers uh, invest in a uh, well diversified index type portfolio.